I'm gonna be straight with you. If you've got $1,500 to spend on a new gaming PC, emphasis on the new, and you wanna build it yourself, this video is for you. I've got three great builds that'll give you the best possible FPS for your dollar. And it doesn't matter if you're a fan of Team Red or Team Green, because I've got options for both. So pay attention, because this is gonna be quick. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. Today I'll be showcasing three awesome builds, one with an AMD graphics card, one using Nvidia, and my personal recommendation for a $1,500 budget. These builds are modeled using an ATX size motherboard and a mid-tower chassis. Pretty standard stuff and the most popular choice when building a PC. Now, two quick notes. First, these recommendations are made to be used for gaming. You could dabble in a little bit of content creation or streaming with these builds, but my direction was to get you the highest FPS possible for your dollar. Second, these lists are only for the PC. This does not include any peripherals such as a monitor, mouse, keyboard, or anything else. I didn't add taxes or shipping to any of these prices. It doesn't even include a Windows license because you can get them for super cheap from plenty of websites. In fact, harmless plug, VIP SCD key is where I get all my Windows keys from, and they've never let me down. They only cost about $10 to $15 and get delivered directly to your email within minutes. Go ahead, give it a try. When budgeting for your build, you need to know where to spend your money. A huge chunk of this will go to your CPU and your GPU, or your processor and your graphics card. The rest of your PC's components will actually be cheaper than your graphics card by itself, or at least they should be. This is where many people end up overspending. The motherboard, CPU cooler, RAM, storage drive, case, power supply, and any miscellaneous items such as riser cables or extra fans fall into this category. I'd say with a $1,500 budget, try to keep all of those components together under $600. That gives you enough cushion to get quality parts but still allow room for upgrades. Check out this cool little chart I made to show rough prices of how much each component should cost. Feel free to pause this part of the video if you want more time to look through this list. Otherwise, I'm gonna move on. The first build list uses an NVIDIA GPU. No, not the 4060 Ti. But they are the most popular card, and for good reason. They give you excellent performance and great features such as DLSS, low latency reflex technology, and the NV encoder. Let's not forget their ray tracing performance is second to none. No wonder they're so popular. Remember, I already spent $600 on the rest of our components, so that only gives us $900 to spend on the CPU and the GPU. I'm gonna be recommending the same processor for both builds, because the bang for buck that this thing gives you doesn't leave room for competition. It's an AMD CPU, and it's from their latest AM5 platform. I've chosen the Ryzen 5 7600X. I was able to find it for $199 over on Amazon. It has six cores and 12 threads with a max boost clock of 5.3 gigahertz. This leaves you as much money as possible for the GPU without creating a CPU bottleneck. The best Nvidia card you can get with what's left is the RTX 4070 Super. The 4070 Ti jumps to over $700 even for the cheapest ones. But it doesn't matter which one you get because they all come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, third gen RT cores, fourth gen tensor cores, and AV1 encoding. NVIDIA GPUs offer better ray tracing performance without a huge loss in FPS, and DLSS is the superior upscaling technology. All of this equates to better resale value too if you want to upgrade your GPU later. Even though most of you will probably go for the offering from Team Green, AMD's Radeon graphics cards will give you the best raw performance for your dollar. I'm talking about rasterization performance since their upscaling technology and ray tracing isn't quite up to par with NVIDIA. But if that stuff doesn't matter, then this one's for you. Again, the CPU is the same Ryzen 5 7600X, coming in under $200 without limiting our GPU. We can't go wrong. Speaking of the GPU, AMD's prices are great right now. I was able to squeeze into our budget the RX 7900 XT. It comes in just under $700 and ends up beating the 4070 Super in some categories. It's got 20 gigabytes of VRAM, which is eight more than the 4070 Super. And this is apparent when jumping from 1440p to 4K gaming. That's right, you can even game at 4K with this setup at a decent frame rate. 
The 7900 XT gives you the highest rasterization performance possible for a $1500 build, without making some major sacrifices. Now it does have weaker RT and upscaling performance, as I said, but if the larger VRAM buffer and better rasterization performance are what you want, your money will go a lot further with this setup. The last build is kind of a mix. With a $1,500 budget, this is what I would recommend. Instead of using the 7600X, I would upgrade to a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. This is currently the best gaming CPU out there. It's got eight cores and 16 threads with a max boost of five gigahertz and it comes with 96 megabytes of L3 cache. It is a little bit more expensive at $385, but my thought is that it's easier to swap out a GPU later than a CPU, and it builds you a more balanced PC, and I'm all about that. So since I'm cutting into our GPU budget to beef up the CPU, what does that leave us with? Well, we have about $515 for our GPU. This allows me to use the RX 7800 XT from AMD. It comes in right at $500 and provides almost the same rasterization performance as the 4070 Super. Now, if you decide to use ray tracing or DLSS, of course the Nvidia card's gonna pull away. It's an excellent 1440p card and it comes with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. According to Hardware Unboxed, it's the best value cost per frame GPU available. If you're looking for the best $1,500 setup, hands down, this is it. There you have it, three incredible setups for under $1,500 each tailored to different preferences and needs. The first two builds, I went with the lowest cost CPU without creating a bottleneck and still left some room for upgrades. I decided to skip the Intel platform completely for obvious reasons. They've got enough to worry about right now. Also, I don't suggest AM4 for new builds as AM5 provides a better upgrade path and support for DDR5 and new technologies like PCI Gen 5 for both GPU and storage. Going with my balanced build recommendation gives you an easier upgrade later, since swapping out a GPU is much simpler than changing out a CPU. That and new GPUs are right around the corner. They may even release as early as this year. It'd be a good idea to subscribe if you wanna catch the latest info on these, because you can be sure I'll try to get my hands on them, and of course, I'll be giving you a full rundown. Each of these builds has room for future upgrades, ensuring that your system can grow with you, because that's one of the best benefits to custom PC building. If you want to see me put together one of these builds here on the channel, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll make it happen. Hopefully today's video has helped point you in the right direction for your next PC build. That's it. I got nothing else for you. Go on, get out of here.